One of the things I've realized is that there's so many chemicals in laundry detergent and the soaps out there. So I either make it myself, it's actually pretty easy, or I use my green fills. If you go to chantelrayway.com slash soap, I'll give you my free recipe for laundry soap. Or if you just feel like buying one that's really clean and not filled with tons of chemicals, you can get it there. chantelrayway.com slash soap. Hey guys, I'm on my way home from being on national TV talking about intermittent fasting and I'm answering the question, does intermittent fasting help you lose weight? Maybe you guys have tried intermittent fasting and lost some weight, but now you might just be stuck in a rut where you're not losing as much as you want. Well, I've interviewed over a thousand thin eaters and I've learned that intermittent fasting is just one of the tools they use, but there's so many more. There's nine other principles that they use to stay thin. To get out of your rut, click here to watch this free video. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce to you Dr. Joel Kahn, and he is a holistic cardiologist, and we are so excited to have him. And today we are talking about the fasting mimicking diet and how to lose weight with it. So welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Joel. Well, thank you. Glad to be here with you today, and uh, hopefully we can help some of your uh, listeners that I know are, uh, you know, hungry for uh, health tips, weight tips. But I have been practicing cardiology. I'm a university graduate, University of Michigan, and did years of training and became an expert on treating heart attacks with uh, catheterization and stents and hospital work. But along the way, I adopted a plant diet when I was 18, before plant diets were really popular, vegan since age 18. And I learned the first year I started practicing cardiology, 1990, is when new data came out that whole food plant diets may actually stop and reverse heart disease. The point of all that being, I've had an unusual career where I was really high tech doing all these procedures, but I was kind of high touch and into nutrition with my patients too. So I've had a a wonderful number of decades of really trying to address their weight, their heart disease, their blood pressure. And I got more interested in what other natural therapies, and certainly diet is probably the most powerful of natural therapies, but sleep, meditation, uh, supplements, uh, acupuncture, and kind of broaden my scope. So my patients, you know, if they need traditional cardiology care, will get it. But if they need an herbal supplement or homeopathy or, uh, you know, infrared sauna or uh, other therapies, they're going to hear about that too. And, you know, they not all my patients are plant-based. I get all kinds of people from all over the United States, but it can be a tool as uh, what you introduced, also the prolonged fasting mimicking diet can be a very effective tool that I adopted in my practice about four years ago. Awesome. So talk about for people who don't know what the fasting mimicking yeah. diet is, how do you prescribe it and yeah. explain what it is in detail? Sure. So, I mean, it'd be pretty impossible nowadays not to know that fasting is one of the most searched words. In fact, I think in 2019, it was one of the most searched words on all the search engines uh, because we're struggling with weight and we're struggling with uh, biotoxicity. That's a fancy word. The plastics, the chemicals, the pollution, the stress, and it's hard to maintain a healthy weight. Um, So of all the versions of fasting, there is one called the fasting mimicking diet which is the research project of a professor in Los Angeles by the name of Walter Longo, PhD, born in Italy, but he's been in Los Angeles most of his career uh, for the last 25 years. He does have a research institute in Milan, Italy. Um, And he started working on aging at a time that aging research was very unpopular and very poorly funded. And he made some breakthrough discoveries that along with other researchers, when you reduce the amount of calories you feed a lab animal, or even you can go earlier than a lab animal, you reduce the amount of calories you feed a yeast in this Petri dish, you will extend the life of almost every type of experimental animal or setup you do. He also took it a step further that there's specific nutrients that most prolong life in these animal models. And when he lowered protein content in the feed of animals or these yeast. And when he lowered glucose content, he was able to particularly extend the life of these animals. And he figured out the pathways. Why is it when you lower protein in the feed of a mouse or in a earthworm, 
why does it live longer and why is that true with glucose? And those are pathways that have fancy names, mTOR pathway, PK RAS pathway. But the biochemistry is amazingly well known and he contributed to that. Now, what really hit a home run for Dr. Longo and his large research team and institute at University of Southern California is humans have the same pathways and humans respond. We didn't know that 25 years ago. When you alter the content of what you're eating, how many calories and what are the nutrients, we respond like earthworms and yeast. And no, we can't say we're going to live 10 times longer like a yeast will or, you know, uh, four times longer like perhaps an earthworm will. We have plenty of data to believe we can enhance our health by occasionally dropping the calorie content and specifically dropping what are in those calories we're eating. So he created, based on 20 years of research in animal models, a human diet in a box, and it's called Prolon. And there are five little boxes in the big box. Uh, the box that says day one is what you eat day one, and obviously through day five. The first day is 1,100 calories, the day two through five or 800 calories. They are made up of 55% of calories from fat, 35% of calories from carbohydrate-based foods, and only 10% of calories from protein, which some might say is a little on the low side. At the end of five days, on the sixth day, you get back into healthy foods, soups and salads. And then for the rest of the month, you eat your healthiest diet. And he designed a study published in 2017 where 100 humans, uh, did that diet three months in a row, five days fasting mimicking diet. And I'll tell you why it's called that. And then 25 days, your own diet, and then repeat that month two and month three. And it was shown rather dramatic and important improvements in markers of health, blood glucose, inflammation markers, stem cell release, oh, body weight, fat around the belly, visceral fat, but you don't lose muscle mass. Most other fasting programs, you're at risk of losing muscle mass. If you just stop eating, you're going to lose some fat uh, pounds, but you're going to lose some muscle pounds, and you might not want to lose your muscle. So it's called the fasting mimicking diet because he originally tried, at least in humans, trying water fasting. And it's not very well tolerated. There are a few real, you know, hardcore people that can do a water fast for a week or 10 days. You're not going to do that if you're sick and you're not going to do that if you have cancer, you're not going to feel good. And he wanted to get the same results as water fasting, but allow people to eat. So it's a fasting mimicking diet. It produces the same results in our biochemistry, but you have enough calories to function day to day. When I've done this program and I've done it at least a dozen times the last three and a half years, I work, I'm with my family. I don't go run 10 miles. I don't want to do that on 800 calories a day. I do some light yoga. I do some light walking. Uh, but you feel remarkably well. And sometimes you really do get a brain fog clearing and you get a real high energy feeling. Um, all these decisions on what goes in that box are based in science and some other data that for most of us, a lower protein diet is actually more associated with health and potentially promoting longevity and slowing aging, kind of the opposite of what you might hear from a typical gym trainer about eat more chicken, eat more tilapia. Um, that lower protein diets have some uh, pretty hardcore research for perhaps slowing aging, and we know why. So it's a very cool hack. You know, I tell my patients, you know, when you take this box home, it's like booking a five-day trip to Canyon Ranch or Maribel, the Red mm -hmm. Mountain Spa, but you do it at home. We're all at home right now. You do it at home, and it's pretty darn tasty. It happens, I should just say. It's non-GMO. It's gluten-free. It's plant-based. There is no meat products uh, in the box. That wasn't my choice. That was Dr. Longo's research, uh, but it's very easy for me to do because it is plant-based. Um, there's soups. There's nut bars. There's a little uh, chocolate sweet cacao bar, uh, some drinks, a lot of teas, herbal teas. Uh, so it's very well designed to get some real health advantage in five days. Awesome. Well, let me play devil as advocate on yes. the vegan side of things. Okay. I know that you're vegan and we all know that from our blood cells to our nerves, vitamin D vitamin B12 is a critical vitamin to our bodies. Like it is absolutely essential. 
Right. And you can't live without it. And so people have said, okay, well, if vitamin B12 is found naturally only in animal foods, including meat and chicken and fish and eggs and dairy, um, and you can get it, you can still get B12 by drinking milk and eating yogurt and eggs and stuff like that. But so that would be, you know, like if God designed us (laughs) to... Like if we can't live without this vitamin and then vitamin B12 is only found naturally in these items, then what would be your response to that? Well, that's a provocative question. And I've been in the ring on the Joe Rogan podcast and I've uh, debated on the doctor's show. So it's all good and it's fine. So a couple of comments. Since you brought up the Lord's name, uh, if you do go to Genesis, I think it's chapter one, verse 29, it says mm-hmm. something like you have, you know, the foods of the field, the seeds and the greens to eat. There are those that base their choice to eat a vegan or plant-based diet, actually on biblical scripture. That's for another podcast and another interview. Yeah, um, I, I actually know that verse. It says yeah, like, you know, every seed bearing plant on the face you, of the whole earth. You're, you're nailing it. It has fruit right. with seed in it. Right. It was after the made. flood and after Noah that there was a, a change in that philosophy because, you know, humans just disappointed our dear Lord and he had to make some accommodations. Um, number two, um, there are recommendations. This is medical fact that if you're living in the United States and you're 50 and older, it's recommended that you supplement with B12 every day, whatever your diet. That is the recommendation mm-hmm. of family practice, internal medicine groups, because as you said, brain health, nerve health, blood cell health is very important. And actually B12 deficiency is pretty widespread, uh, studies show. Number three, I measure vitamin levels in my patients and any doctor can, you can measure vitamin D, B12. I measure omega-3 blood levels. You can even go on and measure vitamin C and zinc and selenium if you want to in people that might be at risk nutritionally. So I'm very selective um, and I'm supplementing many of my meat eaters and my chicken eaters and my uh, fish eaters for various nutritional uh, problems that we identify. I'm not blanketing them, but I do tell my vegans, you know, I don't care what your blood work tells, uh, a small amount, either once a week, take a B12 or every day, take a sublingual B12, uh, very, very inexpensive. Now, you know, B12, as you may know, is actually manufactured by bacteria. And if you're a cow in a pasture and you're grazing grass that is mixed with dirt, you will get those bacteria that have made B12 into a cow and the cow's flesh will have B12. The problem is, and this is just fact, 95, 98% of the meat eaten in America is made in those factory CAFO situations. It's a metal floor. There's no dirt. There's no grazing. So actually, those animals are B12 deficient. They inject them. 80% of all B12 in the United States is injected into pork, fowl, and uh, beef and lamb to get their muscle levels of B12 up to what the consumers expect. So those are just facts. You know, every diet has pros and cons and advantages and disadvantages. Mm And, you know, so I wouldn't lecture to the public that we are, you know, unless it was a religious group that, you know, we are, our destiny is to be vegan. I would lecture in 2020 with pollution, with environmental concerns and global warming and Australia fires and California fires and greenhouse gases and heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and on and on, eating a largely or completely plant-based diet is a uh, intelligent choice if done well. You can do it poorly with chips and Skittles and soda pop. That's a plant-based diet, but it's, it's a vegan diet, but it's a very bad choice. And I would never recommend that to a teenager or an adult. But when you're eating peas and beans and lentils and fruits and vegetables and whole grains, I don't really care if, you know, 90% of your plate is full of peas and beans and lentils and greens, 80% or 100%, but somewhere in that range is for most people where it ought to be. Mm. Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> now, what kind of results have you seen for people doing the fasting mimicking yeah. diet for you personally, like people you've seen? In right, and <laughs> hundreds, hundreds of my patients uh, have done it many times. There's a few people, uh, you don't do it if you're underweight. Um, 
you don't want to do a fasting program if you're underweight. You don't want to do it if you're a type 1 diabetic, brittle, up and down, or even what we call type 2 diabetic, but brittle. I mean, eating 800 calories a day, or if you're going to do it, do it under a doctor's supervision, because typically people are eating you know, 2,500 calories a day. You do have to watch your blood sugar in a few situations. Um, pregnant women shouldn't do it. There are nuts, so nut allergic people uh, aren't going to enjoy it. And there are five olives a day. And it's really funny when you find out uh, who loves olives and who doesn't. I've been an olive lover since the day I'm born. But I literally have to counsel people. This is still a program. The most I didn't mention the fasting mimicking diet is the most researched diet in the United States, the best funded research program. Almost $50 million of National Institute of Health dollars have gone into developing the science behind this program. So it is so different than just you know, reading a blogger and following uh, you know, some other program. I, I like people eating in a 10 hour time window. If people want to eat every other day, that's an option. But the research behind the fasting mimic and diet is huge. What kind of results for the appropriate person? Typically, I mean, the research study said over the course of three months, the average weight loss is between six and eight pounds. But boy, there's variability because you know these are just case studies. I've had people lose 20 plus pounds in three months. Again, it's only five days in your own diet. Of course, you wouldn't probably want to go to a fast food soda pop diet for the other 25 days, eat healthy. Uh, it doesn't have to be a plant-based diet the rest of the month. That's certainly a personal option. Uh, I've heard a lot of people with aches and pains go away. Why? Fascinating data that when you do this five days in a row at the calorie and the nutrition content, stem cells are released in your bloodstream from your bone marrow. I mean, a lot of people are spending a lot of money getting stem cell injections and stem cell infusions. Prolon fasting movement guy is one of the natural ways to stimulate stem cell release. So people may experience some improvement in the sore shoulder and Achilles tendon. Again, my personal story, I was having Achilles tendonitis when I did my first prolon five days and I could not beat it for about six or nine months. And it's just a sim simple testimonial. It was gone. And I do believe it was stem cell release. Stem cells will circulate and they will find injured or abnormal areas and might be able to help support better health in those areas. Inflammation, your listeners probably know the word inflammation. So published data is the high sensitivity C-reactive protein goes down and we want to lead a low inflammation life uh, and the fasting mimicking diet helps that. Um, uh, blood sugar, blood pressure, blood cholesterol uh, trend down after three months. And the last one I'll just mention, it's sciency, but there is a marker that may put people at risk for cancer called insulin-like growth factor one, IGF-1. And this is one of the very few programs after three months, you lower your insulin-like growth factor one, which is associated with like prostate cancer, breast cancer. So we can't say that this prevents or cures cancers. I'm not saying that, but the biomarkers are very you know, uh, hopeful that we're enhancing our health, regenerating our cells, rejuvenating our cells. It's all in line with a fancy concept called autophagy, but self-repair, self-renewal of cells. And that's what this promotes and provokes. So it's funny that you said that about your Achilles <clears throat> and we've had people, a lot of people do just water fasting, you right. know? And so this, uh, we've had testimonials and I've seen it over and over and it seems like five days is the magic number well, for healing. Literally yeah. we've had people that said, um, a girl said she had tore her Achilles uh, and she had, you know, obviously it healed, but it just never was the same. She decided to do a five day water fast after the five day water fast. She said her Achilles was better than before she broke it, yeah. or, you know, or injured and tore it. Well, it's, it's funny to say that, you know, it isn't random that this is a five day program. And that's again, where it's different. Like a lot of people intermittent fasting, maybe a day a week, they'll do juice or water and all those may be of advantage, but in Dr. Longo's years of research, one day may help you lose weight, but it didn't stimulate some of these healing biochemical pathways, two, three. It's that fourth and fifth day that you basically stressed your body out enough with this low calorie, 
uh, situation of balanced nutrients, that that's when you really see the magic. And it wasn't much better to do it six, seven, eight days. So this was picked for very scientific reasons. So it's interesting that that's been the water fasting experience too. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Hey guys, I want to tell you about a great product that you absolutely cannot live without, and it's called Digest Aid. When you're stressed, you might not be able to produce as much stomach acid. And if you're eating a little more right now and you're stressed, you need help to digest your food. My Digest Aid that I created has enzymes that are capable of doing just that. It has both betaine HCL, not just HCL, but an enzyme pepsin that helps your body digest your food, which is really unique. And right now, all of our products are 30% off. Go to ChantelRayWay.com, click on store and get yours for 30% off. Just use the promo code podcast. I don't know about you guys, but I've been doing a ton of cooking lately. And I've been having so many new recipes. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash free recipes to get the best kale dressing recipe you'll ever have. The dairy-free artichoke dip that you will love for completely free. I also want to give you my entire free smoothie book that has the best smoothies. One of the things that can help you lose weight is just to replace one of your meals with an amazing smoothie. So if you're eating two meals, just make one of them a smoothie. You can get my free amazing recipe book at chantelrayway.com slash free recipe. And our protein shakes are amazing as well. And right now they're 30% off. Go to chantelrayway.com, click on store and use podcast for the 30% off your protein shake. Yeah, it really has been. And it's funny that people are saying it's like the that fifth day. So it's funny that he has done that yeah. on a five days because it's, I mean, literally I can show you where people are like, I consume nothing but water for five days. Here's what happened. And it was completely awesome. You know, yeah, it's, it is, it is, there's, again, these are fancy concepts. There's a concept called hormesis, H-O-R-M-E-S-I-S, but it's kind of like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and a little stress on the body, whether it's uh, getting in an ice bath, whether it's exercise, uh, whether it's reducing your calories, 800 calories a day for the last four days of this program, it's not going to kill you. Well, it can actually make you stronger. And it, and that's what provokes by stressing the body. We get this response and it actually is like a rejuvenative, regenerative response to the fasting mimicking diet. So people buy these boxes, they walk out of air, they go home and they open it up and uh, you know they're on their way. Pretty si- it's very simple. Yeah. So let's talk about cholesterol for just a second. One thing that we are getting a lot of questions about are people, I'm getting a lot of listeners coming in and they're saying, you know, my cholesterol is really high, but my good cholesterol is, is high too. So they're, they're kind of going in, their good cholesterol is high, but they're their regular, the total cholesterol is just through the roof. So what are some things they need to do and how important is it if their good cholesterol is high, but their other cholesterol is high too, is that okay? It's it's a great question. And it's literally what I do in my clinic here in suburban Detroit, you know, every day with patients Um, because the lab values are risk factors, having a high total cholesterol having a high LDL cholesterol, the lousy, the low density, it puts you at risk for clogged arteries and having a high, what you call good cholesterol or HDL cholesterol, puts you at lower risk traditionally for clogged arteries. But it's all a calculation. And when I see one patient in front of me, one-on-one, I don't want to guess, I want to know. So a couple really important messages that I didn't expect you to ask, but I'm happy. Number one, there are things called advanced labs. There's something called an advanced lipid, lipid is another word for cholesterol, lipid, L-I-P-I-D profile, 
$35 at Quest, at LabCorp, at your hospital lab. You get much more information. It's called your particle number, your particle size. So I do that routinely. I did flash a book by, I'm being a little commercial and I apologize, no. but my, my newest book came out just in the last two weeks called Lipoprotein Little A, The Heart's Quiet Killer. This is a kind of cholesterol that one out of every four person inherits from their parents. It's never on the routine panel but it causes many heart attack strokes, bypass surgeries, and heart valve surgeries. So it's becoming a bit more, and it costs about $20 to get it checked. It's just a blood test. But it's becoming more the norm in the patient like you described. That's, if this is also high, if you're one of the one in four, that cholesterol all matters more because now you've got two problems going on. And the last thing I'd say is there is a way, I'm a big fan of being very, very specific do you have heart disease or not? So I'm going to reach over across my desk. Um, about 20 years ago, a, a method was identified that in 10 seconds, you can find out if you have silent heart artery disease or not. Maybe you can see that picture. That's a CAT scan. And it looks like a circle. The bones are bright white from all the calcium, the ribs, the, the breastbone, the sternum. The lungs are the black in the middle. And the heart is the gray blob, and there's a yellow area, arrow. And you can tell on a CAT scan if your heart arteries are getting calcified, the term hardening of the arteries. So just to get to the point, if I saw a 50-year-old man or woman that had the lab values you were talking about, I would tell him, you know, for $75, maybe $90 at your local hospital, you can have a coronary artery calcium scan takes 10 seconds, no injection, no iodine, no IV, no pain. It's the easiest test in the world. And it used to be $1,000, but hospitals do it now for $75. Um, and, you know, if that person with the cholesterol you just told me about has a perfect result, I'm going to reassure them because I've been very accurate. I want to be accurate. And if they have a, a lousy result like that yellow arrow and they are walking around with unknown heart disease, we're going to work to get the cholesterol down, fitness, diet, maybe natural supplements, better sleep, meditation. It might take a prescription drug. So I judge my therapy based on do you have silent hardening of your arteries or not? And it's just so simple to do it. Just most gynecologists, primary care docs, internists are still a little reluctant to order this test. It's been around for 20 years. It, it's inconceivable why it isn't routine. So let me just repeat back what I, I heard you say and kind of what I know about cholesterol, right? Yeah. So there's two types of <clears throat> cholesterol. There's HDL, which is high density lipoprotein. And then there's low density lipoprotein, which is LDL, right? Perfect. And Perfect. as a general rule, HDL is considered the good cholesterol and Perfect. LDL is considered the bad cholesterol. Perfect. And then lipoprotein is a type of LDL, right? It's That's actually, it's, a, it's a third kind of cholesterol. It's oh, okay. li lipoprotein little a. It's a funny little term. Whoever says lipoprotein little a is how you mm -hmm. pronounce it, is even another kind of cholesterol that's in your blood if you're one out of every four people. And it can be sky high. And I have probably hundreds of patients that have had a heart attack, a stroke, a bypass, or some like the CAT scan evidence of silent disease and lifestyle is perfect. And the doctor said your labs are perfect. Well, nobody drew this $20, $25 lab test. And it turns out that was the bad puppy that was hurting their arteries. It's just as common in men and women. And, you know, it's inherited, which means from age one or two, that blood level of that cholesterol has been high your whole life. Usually the LDL cholesterol is going to go up in your adult phase. So this thing's been around for a long time in your body and therefore it can do harm. But it's also a risk factor. You can have a high cholesterol in clean arteries. You can have a high lipoprotein little a cholesterol and have clean arteries. That's why this calcium CT scan. And I'll just say, I don't own a CAT scanner. So this isn't a commercial uh, you know, adver advertisement come to my CAT scanner. Hospitals have CAT scanners. So I refer to my local hospital that charges in my area, 75 to $99. So let's talk about the total cholesterol numbers, like what's good, what's borderline, what's high, and then the HDL numbers 
in your opinion, that are good, borderline and high. And the reason I say that is because one of the things I say about holistic doctors, their ranges of what's acceptable is a lot different than what a regular practitioner may say is different. And I don't know if that's the same when it comes to cardiologists. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a statement I use a lot, you know, be open-minded, but not so open-minded, your brains fall out. There is too much data that if you're a real heart patient, you've had a stent, a bypass, a heart attack, probably a stroke from blockage, the data is overwhelming that you need your cholesterol very low. You need your total cholesterol 150 or lower. You need your LDL cholesterol 70 or lower. And your HDL as high as we can get it, but we don't have any really effective drugs to raise the HDL. We're talking about eating healthy and going to the gym and maybe a little red wine now and then. Um, and that's about it. Um, so if I have somebody that, uh, whether I'm a standard cardiologist, a holistic cardiologist, I got to get their cholesterol down. And I'm going to work with diet, which most cardiologists aren't going to spend much time on, and fitness. I may use natural supplements from red yeast rice or bergamot or berberine or niacin. Um, but ultimately, if they need a prescription drug, I'm going to give them a prescription drug. The standard of care and the scientific data is too large. But then we got all those other people. Where I'm concerned, you go to your primary care doc or internist. They draw your cholesterol's 230 and your LDL's 168. That's very common. And they give you a prescription for a cholesterol drug for life. Well, you haven't had this scan. Your arteries may be perfectly clean. To take a prescription drug for life when you don't have a disease is something that many cardiologists in the natural world feel is just not right. So again, I rely on an actual examination of the heart to help me decide. I will let my patients with clean, clean arteries run a higher cholesterol, and I'm gonna emphasize more diet, exercise, supplements, and I'm gonna take those that have a bad result or have had the heart attack, and I'm gonna ratchet it down. Um, cardiologists have been doing research on cholesterol for, you could go back 50, 60 years, but at least since the 1980s, and all of it's consistent. If you have bad blockage, you want a low cholesterol. Some of my patients now run cholesterols of 100. They feel great, their brain's great, they're having no problem, their hormones are great. You know, there are side effects sometimes, either supplements or prescription drugs, you have to monitor all that, but um, the average person doesn't need that. But if you go out into the jungles in South America and started checking blood cholesterol levels of people eating from the bush and the trees, their cholesterol is 105 or 110 for total cholesterol. So it's not that rare. It's just in America, we think 220 is okay, but 220 gets a lot of people heart attacks and strokes. So it's called precision medicine or personalized medicine. I want to tell you what you need I don't want to make a statement that was done in a study of 5,000 people and tell you what you need. So try and really hone down. So what's funny is I've had two different people that I know, both of them who had massive high, high cholesterol. One guy went completely vegan for six months yes. and his cholesterol went completely back to normal. And now he is living about like 70% plant-based, 30% you know, meat mm -hmm. and his numbers are totally normal. Like Great. that was his protocol that he did. And then I know another guy that kind of went up just a paleo diet where he was eating lots of meat, still eggs and just all kinds of stuff, but just cut out like a lot of grains out of his diet, cut out a lot of sugar. And then he got his cholesterol completely back to normal. And so I thought yeah. it was funny that here's two people yeah. who went a totally different route and both of them, now their numbers are perfect. They're in great health. The key was they really got rid of the processed bingo, food bingo, bingo, their bingo. diet and, yeah. and lots of grains. They really, lots of veggies, lots of, you know, one did yeah. just veggies, one did lots of meat, fish, and, um, you know, just got rid of the grains and the junk. Well, I think you just hit a bullseye, which is, you know, some would say a complete plant diet is extreme. I've been doing it for 43 years. It's pretty second nature, but I, some would say a paleo diet is extreme. There's a lot of rules, what you can, what you can't. Right. It's not, I've eaten many meals with my paleo friends and they have more trouble 
maybe we're at a restaurant or cafeteria uh, than I do because I just order the broccoli, uh, the grilled spinach, and maybe a baked potato. I'm done. <laughs> the point is, it does take some effort and maybe even rules that could be called extreme to get your cholesterol to drop 100 points. It's well worth it. Um, and all, but getting rid of processed junk food. The average American doesn't have food rules. You know, it may be based on their budget, maybe based on their cooking skills, on the availability, on their, you know, neighborhood. But if you have no food rules, you're eating processed food, you don't have a chance at really maintaining optimal health. Mm. Awesome. So anything else that you've seen that you've advised your patients to do that have just really gotten great weight loss results for them where you've said, yeah, you know, I would say the last thing, it's a great question is a big, big focus in my clinic on sleep health and, mm -hmm. you know, detailed histories, time to bed, what happens during the night, snoring, how many times you up, are you restless? What time you out of bed? Uh, if there's a spouse or significant other, I want to get the true story about snoring. Um, you know, it is so common that people are, you know, getting four or five hours of sleep, or maybe they're in bed seven hours and they have interrupted sleep. A lot of people using Garmin, Fitbit, phone-based apps. There's a ring a lot of people have called the aura aura. ring. Yeah, is you're wearing it. I, I keep mine on my nightstand. I use it at night. I don't wear it during the day. The O U R A ring. So there are ways, there's a very cool free app called Snore Lab, S-N-O-R-E Lab. Okay. And you just leave your phone on while you're in bed. It records, it analyzes, it provides you some feedback. So there may not be somebody else there with you, but it's quite reliable. The bottom line is by focusing on all that. And if needed, uh, a sleep study, there's now what are called home sleep studies. You don't have to go to the hospital and spend $3,000. You can sleep in your own bed, get valid data. When I can get people sleep six, seven, seven and a half hours, I might need magnesium, melatonin, lavender, chamomile, uh, GABA is one of my favorites, sleep masks and white noise, whatever it takes, Epsom salt baths, uh, weight loss really is accelerated. Sometimes they have sleep apnea and they actually have to go wear the device or lose weight or see a dentist for a mouth thing. But when they get their sleep regulated and optimized, uh, that is magic in terms of the weight. So that's what I do advise them. So I have the aura ring and I wear it every single night. And I would say I'm probably get, you know how it gives you a sleep score of like right. 80 or 82. And I am always getting like my sleep, my total sleep is usually good. My efficiency is good. My restlessness is good. Except for, I mean, my re the only one that I'm always in a bad place on yeah is my restlessness. So hmm. like, I'll just kind of show you like every time, like I'm like, here's an 86 score. Mm -hmm. My total sleep was eight hours, nine minutes. Efficiency was 88%. My REM sleep, but my, this time I didn't get good deep sleep, but mm -hmm. almost always my restlessness, um, is says pay attention. All almost yeah. always. Do it's you a know, tough one. do you know why that would be? Well, you know, there is a medical diagnosis, restless leg syndrome, RLS. There are prescription drugs that a neurologist or sleep specialist might use in that setting. Um, you know, if you were in an official sleep lab, they do videotape you during your sleep to see if you're all over the place and maybe you have the sense of that. Um, I like magnesium before bed, four or mm -hmm. 500 milligrams, whether it's a capsule, whether it's a powder like natural calm powder. An Epsom salt bath is magnesium. Uh, it's one of the best ways to deal with that. If you're not using that now, you might try it. Yeah. Yeah. I've read a study that, that parasites can like in your gut mm. can, you know, disrupt the sleep cycle. Interesting. And yeah. That it, it could be something that, so I'm kind of researching that now to see if that's. Yeah. Add a little yeah. oil of oregano to your, uh, Right. regimen and maybe beat down a couple extra parasites. <laughs> exactly. Well, this was so much fun. Tell Thank us you. First where they can find you and where they can follow you and tell them again about your book. Oh, you're so kind. So the website I can be found at is my name, Dr. Dr. Joel, J-O-E-L Khan, K-A-H-N.com. It'll take you everywhere between my clinic and my books and everything. Um, I'm on Twitter, Dr. J Khan, D R J K H N. I'm on Instagram, Dr. J Khan. I'm on Facebook, my name, Joel Khan, MD. And 
Yeah, I do. I've written six books and they're fun ones, even called Vegan Sex, but I'll let you read it if you want to read it. It's a pretty uh, hot, awesome. hot and racy book. But <laughs> yeah, this one's just out on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, Lipo Protein Little A, The Heart Silent Killer. And if somebody particularly has a family history, grandma, uncle, maybe a parent, you really need to know, and I mean a family history of heart disease, you really want to ask your doctor, hey, I read an interesting book. It's a thin book. It's actually full of recipes too. I wanted to give hmm. people some value uh, for that too. Um, I had a recipe writer work with me, so they're really good recipes. Um, you know, you should learn about this. It may crack open the family tradition. We're just a family with a heart disease risk. Well, it's probably this. This is the most common. Because you're saying I, one out of every four. One out of every four, that's 1.8 billion people in the world carry this risk and I'm telling you, 1.799 billion have no idea about it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for being Thank with you. us. Thank you. Stay safe, be healthy. Yes, you too. And you guys stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.